That is awesome, 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 God, yeah. We are thankful to God and we are blessing the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt the name of the Lord together. It's Elder Lisa's time. It's time for Bible study. John chapter 8 is where we will be today, verses 42 through 47 ish. But we'll talk about all of the content of John 8 briefly. Um, NIV is likely where I'll be reading from, but any version will do. Uh, thank God for you. Let us know that you've joined us in the replay. Please send a comment, say hello. This is from wherever you are from, so that we can pray for you and Thank you for coming and being with us. God bless you. Again, you're welcome. Yes, God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Let's celebrate the Lord today. What a mighty God. You have a need. God says, I will supply every one of your needs according to his riches and glory. Our God, our God, our God, hallelujah. Awesome, mighty, strong, power. Yes, God. All knowing, present, help, strength. Whatever we need, God's got it. God's got everything. Everything we need. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ooh, bless the name of the Lord today. Yes, God. Wonderful and worthy to be praised. Wonderful and worthy to be praised. We praise you, O oh God. We magnify you. We exalt you. We lift you up. Hallelujah. There's no great God. No God greater than you, God. You are our great God. You are our mighty God. You are King. You are our Lord. You are our excellency. You are our power. You are God. You are God. We're grateful to God for being, hallelujah, his people called by his name. We humble ourselves before true and living God. We pray. We seek his face. We turn from anything that is not like God. And we ask the Lord to help us, help us, God, help us, help us uh, to be strong, to be faithful, to be available, to surrender. Yes, Lord. We surrender to the Lord today. All to Jesus, I surrender. I surrender, I surrender all to the Lord. That's not easy to do because we're used to being in control or at least thinking we're in control. But when we surrender all to the Lord, God will allow us to know where we are able to be a part of God's plan. And I think that's just an amazing thing to be a part of God's plan. That is amazing. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Let's pray. Yeah. God, we thank you. We are asking that you would help us to surrender to you. Help us to know the truth. Help us to seek after your will and your way. Give us the courage to be able to lay aside the earthy thoughts, these careless thoughts, these uh, lustful thoughts, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Let rebuke all of it, God, in the name of Jesus. And help us to be able to stand firm on the truth. Jesus, you are the truth. Hallelujah. You have, you have set us free. You've made us free. For those of us who have repented, and we thank you and we praise you. Continue to help us to grow strong in your word and in your will and in your way. So that when we talk about your word with others, we come with confidence and assurance. And they will be able to embrace and run with your vision for them. Hallelujah to you, God. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. You are my strength. You are my redeemer. Hallelujah. My redeemer lives. And it's in your son Jesus' name. 
We pray and give you praise, God. And the people of God say amen. Hallelujah. My Redeemer, if your Redeemer lives, come on. My Redeemer lives. I'm going to put that in my own chat. My Redeemer lives. Yes, oh God. I can face tomorrow because my Redeemer lives. All fear and hope is hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm not only fearful about my life, I am grateful because my hope is not in me. My hope is in the Lord. My hope is in the Lord. And so welcome, welcome to the uh, time for Bible study. It's time, it's time. You have a moment. You're at lunch. You're at break. It's September the 20th, 2023. It's time for Bible study. It follows our Sunday sermon entitled, I Know the Truth. I Know the Truth. I Know the Truth. And we prayed and we know the truth and we're looking for God to give us more of that truth from that uh, sermon from Sunday on today. I know the truth. You can always go back to our YouTube channel and um, see the upload from Sunday's worship experience if you want to know more about that message and how we're going to go in now to John chapter 8. And if you're here, tell us that you're here. Tell us where you're from. There's so many people who are we're blessed to have come, not just only from my home city, St. Louis, but we have so many people who join in with us from other cities and countries. So please don't forget to tell us where you are coming in from on today. John chapter eight is where I'll be reading from verses 42 through 47. And it's good to be here. It's good to be here. Oh, yeah. Yes, Lord, it's good to be here. John chapter 8, uh, verses 42 through 47 in the NIV. If you have not um, been um, aware of the beauty of our Lord being a teacher, our, our, our Savior is a teacher. Teachers want, and teachers want you to know um, the capacity of which you are growing and learning. Teachers want you to know. Um, that there are challenges from learning because then what you have learned will be put to the test. Teachers, teachers, he's a great teacher. And uh, John chapter eight in of itself is awesome because it talks to us about knowing the truth, um, but also about um, knowing the difference between the lie and the truth. We're, we're interested in that, right? Because there is a deceiver, there's a deceiver um, called the devil and he is a liar. And so in this particular portion of the text, Jesus is talking to those who are either children of God or children of the devil. There's either one or the other. It's either that you're gonna love Christ or you're going to and follow him in, uh, in your love for him or you're gonna hate Christ and annoy, uh, ignore the instructions of Christ is either one or the other, but it can't be both, right? So we're we're thankful that we know the truth. If you know that the truth is that Jesus Christ and all of his claims, the claims that he put in uh, verses 21 through 30, that um, he's the teacher in the temple who speaks the word of God, that he is the death, resurrection, and ascension, that he is the wonder working power, that his life is that example for us, and that he is that tabernacle that would have been destroyed, and then in three days will rise up again, and that sins are to be forgiven, because Jesus Christ is the manifold blessing and the propitiation of our sin. I wish I had somebody who would just be thankful that they are no longer bound and say, no longer bound, no longer bound, elder, no longer bound, no longer bound, no longer bound, no longer bound, no longer bound. hallelujah. No longer bound, no longer bound, no longer bound, no longer bound. And so we're thankful to God for Jesus giving us this uh, portion. He's, he's, he's talking, he's teaching, it's red. If you look at your Bible, it's red. That means it's Jesus, he's talking, he's teaching, it's red. And he wants us to know the difference between the, the lie and the truth, wants us to know the difference between when you're following Satan or when you're following Jesus, wants us to know the difference between um, falling in 
um, in, into deception or and believing the deception or uh, adapting to the truth because there's a, there's an adaptability that has to happen uh, when it comes to the truth. We make adaptations for other things, but we need to adapt to the truth. And then we need to make sure our attitude, uh, that's what we talked about Sunday, we gotta make sure our attitude is in the right perspective because when you don't get your way, right? Don't, don't, we're not gonna be doing that pouty, uh, uh, angry, um, what is it? Um, stomping around um, <laughs> with, your, with your lip poked out talking about, well, you didn't do what I do. Sometimes we just gotta adapt, honey. We got to adapt and it's not easy because we like to be able to have what we want, but God is uh, showing us, show, show us God, show us that we have to learn how to adapt, we have to learn how to adapt and that our attitude might be actually emulating the wicked and not the righteous. What, what, wait a minute, Elder, hold on, wait, hold on. You mean my attitude might be looking more like the devil than like than Christ? It might be, sure might be, sure might be. And when and if that be the case, then we need to uh, say, I'm no longer bound, I'm no longer bound, I'm no longer bound no longer bound. So let's read it. Eight, uh, the eighth chapter, verses 42 to 47 in the NIV, it says, Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me for I came from God and now am here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. Mm -hmm. Why is my language not clear to you? Verse number 43, because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. Who? Satan. No truth in Satan. And when he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Someone has been told one thing about themselves and they've been holding on to that thing and it has been a lie and it has deceived and it is held back and it is held uh, uh, under, it has oppressed and we have to be able to say, no, 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 that's not even the voice of God. Let me get on to the truth. Hallelujah. Because the father of lies has lied to sometimes generation after generation about who they are. And so verse number 45 says, yet because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Oh Lord, that's why we have to adapt. We have to adapt to the truth. I tell you the truth, you, uh, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? And if I'm telling the truth, why don't you believe me? No, Jesus knows no sin. And yet we have a hard time accepting the truth of what Jesus has said we will do, we will come. We will have, we will see more. What did he say? He said, he said more, you'll do more uh, because you believe and have not yet seen. You know, greater works you will do. And we have a hard time because we're looking, feeling like the works aren't getting any greater. But these promises are the truth of Jesus Christ. And why don't you believe me? He says, and so 47, he who belongs to God, hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Wait a minute. You mean it is because I am not fully giving myself, surrendering over to the truth. He said, either you, either you follow and obey what I have said or you follow the devil. Well, we don't want to do that, boy. So we, but so let's let's look at let's look at some of these um, aspects of John chapter eight. First of all, uh, the whole the whole of this conversation is that Christ is the truth, uh, that Christ is the truth. When you look at John 1 and 14, Christ is the truth. Yes, Lord. When we, we look at um, the fact that, that Christ is the word made flesh, dwelled among us, he is the truth. He is the truth. John 1 and 14, John 1 and 14, um, would be good for us to take a look at real quickly. John 1 and 14, because Jesus is our truth. And all these uh, new age persons saying that I'm living out my truth and I'm seeking my truth and all this about their truth. And it has nothing to do with what God or what Jesus Christ has done for us. And so the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we've seen his glory, the 
glory of the one and only who came from the father full of grace and truth. Christ is the truth. And so anything that's in Christ, anything that is of the will of Christ is coming, his teaching, his um, uh, instruction, his uh, furthering of what we are to do when he left the earth and left disciples like ourselves in um, in charge that he is asking us to follow after that truth, know that truth, know the voice of that truth, follow after that truth and, and remembering that truth even when we are challenged on every side. John 14 and six says, Jesus answered, I am the way. So how do we know we're following the truth when we're following the way that Jesus has laid out? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Living, he loved us. Hallelujah. Die, he saved us. I'm the life. We get life in Christ because Christ is the truth and that no one comes to the Father, hallelujah, except through me. And if you really knew me, you would know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Christ is the truth. He's the truth and the life. There's no lie in Christ. And so we're uh, looking to uh, understand why then are so many of us believing the lie, the, the, the what you aren't and how you're not loved and how you're not um, uh wonderfully made and how you are not worth it and how you are not smart enough or beautiful enough or um, you're not strong enough, you're not capable enough. All these things that we are clearly hearing from the devil because we, we should know anyway that God made us and said, now that's good, that's good. And whatever we do for Christ, with Christ in mind, with the motive of Christ, that will last. And so if, if we're concerned about our inferiority, if we feel inferior in any way, then don't worry, because if you're following the way, which is Jesus, the Christ, then we won't have to worry about the outcomes because it will be up to Jesus. Come on. Hmm. What? Anybody want to say amen to that? It will be because of Jesus. If you are following the way and the way has told you to go minister to those in the hospitals, go minister to those in prison, go talk to the people on your job, go into your community, your neighbor needs a word, Where, wherever Jesus has sent you and you follow with the obedience, then you, when you go, all the success relies on Jesus having sent you, it relies on the truth having been with you and in you, huh? And so I'm thankful to God for that. Uh, John 18 and 37 says, you are a king, then said Pilate. And Jesus answered, you were right in saying I am king. In fact, for this reason, I was born. And for this, I came into the world to testify to the truth. What? Tru the truth. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What's the truth? That his mission is to save those who are lost. His mission is to seek and to save those who are lost. What is, what is the mission? His witness is so that we can have again this life and to hear and to be able to receive what God has for the believer, for the believer and everyone on the side of truth. What, Lisa? What? Yep, I didn't make it up. It's in red. It's Jesus saying it. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Listens to me. Christ is the truth. And we listen to Christ because Christ has uh, the uh, way, the answer, and what we need. So how do we adapt? We're adapting to truth. We, we have to adapt to the truth. And, and, and this is a, a segment, adaptation of truth that we didn't get to on Sunday because it was probably a, a little more uh, that we wanted to say about in, verses, in a sermon. So that's why we're here at Bible study. And if you're here, make sure to say hello. Let us know where you're um in from or uh, tuning in from and uh, however long you can stay we bless the lord for you so we're grateful that there is an adapting to the truth and that there is an adaptation of truth 
for the sake of our understanding. And so this adaptation, let me go with the rougher one first, because um, it is rough. It is rough because this adaptation of truth means that uh, some of the instances that Jesus will speak to the disciples, to those of us in when we read scripture, is that it's hard for us to adapt, right? It's hard for us to adjust. It's hard for us uh, to come out of our ways. And so he has to use things like parables and um, other devices to help us to understand because why we can be hard headed. Mm, like some little person right here being hard headed. We can be hard headed. We can be uh, resistant. We can be uh, uh, prideful and arrogant. We can be uh, unwilling to adjust. We can be uh, hard of hearing. Sometimes uh, we heard, but we don't receive and we don't comply. We don't adjust and we don't, uh, and we do not bend to the truth. This is this is what I find so interesting about it. Uh, Sister Miranda, God bless you. Uh, we're, we're thinking about that when we talk to uh, other uh, Christians, right? Like people who have been in the faith for a while and you hear them saying some things that they've been saying for like the last two years, three years, five years, and they're, they're still wrestling with these same uh, uh, demons and or desires and or thoughts. Um, it's because human weakness um, that needs to have us to surrender to the all power, to the truth. So the adaptation of truth for us to understand, he says, I want you to know, I, I realize that your human weakness uh, causes you to want to fall back into old ways, but he's also saying not only old ways, but I want you to understand yourself on a new level. Mm, on a new level, on a level of greatness, on a level of righteousness. Understand you are no longer that. You are no longer. So it's hard to adapt sometimes to the truth because of our weaknesses and our frailties. And um, so or either the way that we comprehend ourselves and think of ourselves, we need to adapt to the truth and not adapt to the, 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 the falseness of the truth, the liars uh, that have been lying to us about how much we are not. And so uh, John 16 and 12 says, I have much more to say to you more than you can bear. What, wait, I have more to say to you, but you can't bear the truth. What, what's that one movie say? You can't handle the truth. Jesus has to say, you can't bear it. You can't handle it. Wouldn't it be interesting to say, well, Jesus, am I still on milk or am I able to have meat of the word? Well, that's what the adaptation is. It, it's saying that it, it is challenging that you've been on milk. My grandbaby's almost two. She gonna have to come off as much milk. We've been weaning her from milk because she needs to be eating more substantive uh, you know, protein. She needs to be chewing on a hamburger, right? And, and, and getting some turkey meat and all that wonderful good stuff that has protein in it. And so at some point you have to wean off of the milk and get to the meat. And Jesus is saying, because we have, much, he's got much more to say, but we can't bear it. Maybe in prayer, then we can come and say, well, Jesus, help me to be able to be mature enough to bear the truth. And not to be all emotional, okay? Because you know, sometimes you, okay. I have, I have a very small circle of friends, and the reason is, is because I need them to know me so well that if I am off in any way, they can give me the truth, and I'm okay, even if it's the hardest of things for them to say. A good friend would be able to say, "Here's the truth." Now, here's the truth because they know you. Well, who knows us better than God, our creator? Who knows us better than his son, Jesus, who knows our end and from our beginning and all? Who knows us better than the Holy Spirit who would lead us to truth? Not so that we would feel attacked or belittled or victimized, but that we can deal with the truth 
that's happening in us. What, what could be some of the things happening in us? One, maybe we're not as honest with ourselves about what we are still yet struggling with. Maybe we're not adapting to the fact that life is not easy and we take it so personally when things happen in life. But he says, if you are in this life, you're gonna have trouble and you're gonna have issue. But I'm here with you in the midst of it. And so when we, we are, if we're too weak to accept the truth, and if we're too weak to be able to listen, then Lord, give us strength so that we can hear and listen to what you have to say to us. And it, where is it? Where can it be found? It's not just up to the pastors to preach and teach. It's up to us to be in the word enough so that when the word comes, and if that word hurts, that many uh, similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. So even Jesus is saying, I know that there's limited understanding in some perspectives and in some cases. And so I have to teach in a certain way, but let it not be that we have to repeat over and over a lesson because we're not able to bear it that that really resonated i thought well wait a god is, is there something that i've been unable to bear that you've been trying to say something but i'm unable to bear it because i'm not mature enough because i'm uh I'm, I'm taking things so personally and and this is the beauty of knowing the truth that when we follow after jesus if he was accused we will be accused if he was um, uh, mocked, we will be mocked. If he was uh, scandalized in any way, uh, we will. We will. We're followers, and we will have to contend with some of the pain of following Jesus. But it's ultimately worth it. As a matter of fact, it was the Apostle Paul that says, it, "All of this, it, it, all of this. If I have to endure it, it's." greater the glory that is coming when I be in the presence of the Lord. It's greater whatever I have to contend with here because the glory can't be compared to what we will have when we are with our God. And that the beauty of this is that even in this earthly existence, we don't have to be challenged by believing. We need to ask God, why am I having a hard time at receiving what you are wanting me to hear, wanting me to hear. So we we, we are a, a, a adaptation of the truth. We don't want to be found to the weaker. We want to be found to be able to ex accept and adapt to the truth. What's, what's the adaptation of the truth? That we've been set free, that we have been born again, that we have been in the presence of of redeemer I, I said it i said it before hey pastor sheldon that we've been in the presence of a redeemer and my redeemer lives i can face tomorrow because my redeemer lives my redeemer lives my hope is in my redeemer so we're adapting to the truth so back to john eight just because uh, we're adapting to truth and we have the attitude then uh, we don't want to have an attitude that the wicked hold. We want to have an attitude then of appreciation and patience. And we're adapting. We're learning how to wait on the Lord and be of good courage while he strengthens our heart. We are adapting and we're waiting on the Lord. We are adapting to the truth. We are changing. Uh, we're growing. We're maturing. Uh, you know what? If if we were the same that we were last week, even, then we're not adapting, right? Our, our adaptation should show a daily growth and a daily nurturing and a daily uh, validation of who we are to God, right? The children of God, not the children of the devil. Because there, there is that, right? In this verse, it says that if God were your father, you would love me. Because why? Jesus has been under attack always. And that telling uh, the truth, he says, everyone who sin is a slave to sin. And everyone who is um, 
uh, slave to sin has a permanent place in hell. Uh, and and the, the adaptation of the truth then is that he's the son of God who came to set us free. But some of us have contended to go back to the thing that we were set free from, redeemed from, uh, delivered from, and, and, and not just actions, but the mentality of it. See, because when, when, you're, when you're a new creature, old things or passed away. So no more negative thinking, no more I don't want to do for them because what they did to me, no longer being bitter and resentful and spiteful. Lord, have mercy. We got to adapt to the truth. So when your mind is changed because you've been changed, when your mind is changed because you've been changed, it, it changes the way we respond. It changes the way we act. It changes the way we behave. It changes the way we uh, think of others. We know that they are also loved by God. And we are willing then to love them. Hallelujah. Serve them. Adapting. And so he says that there's an adapting to truth and that love will be the answer. Why? Because love he says, if you, love, if you love God, if you were the, of the father, you would love me. It's, so it must be about a love. Love lifts us. Love holds us. Love sustains us. I've not come to you on my own, he said, but I came to you because I love you. Ooh, the power of love. He said, but because you are unable to hear what I say, you don't belong to God. You belong to the devil. Because you don't know, because you don't know this love, accept this love. Walk in this love, talk in this love. You belong to the father of the devil and carry out the father's desires. Someone might be reading that verse that says, and he, you were a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. We, what were we killing? We were killing uh, not only physically each other, but possibly killing each other spiritually or killing the promise of the future that Jesus sacrificed so that we could have. Kill, killing opportunity, killing, um, killing promise, oh Lord, by being what? Unable to adapt to the truth, unable to adapt to the truth, unable to adapt holding to the truth for there is no truth in the devil. And so all of the things that the devil has said that could not be sometimes holding on to those things. I'll never recover from the abuse of childhood. I'll never recover from the abuse of the relationship as an adult. I'll never recover. I'll, I'll always be debt uh, in debt. I'll, uh, all those things don't sound like the liberation and the truth of God, because if we know the truth, we know that God's a healer. That, that God is a restorer, that God is a provider, that God is a lifter. Oh, hallelujah. That God is a mender of the brokenhearted. And, and when we give our heart over, God will mend our broken heart. Adapting, adapting to the truth and not believing the lie. Adapting to the truth and not being under the deception of the liar. He says he's the father of lies. He's the father of of lies. There's, there's no truth in the devil. There's no uh, opportunity for the devil to be truthful, right? There's no opportunity for us to even have to consider if it was true or not because of deception. We don't want to be deceivers and we don't want to fall under deception. We don't want to listen to the attitude of the wicked. We don't want to listen to the false teaching or the false perception of who we are because the liar has spoken. No, no, no. I, I thank God. I thank God that we can silence the voice of the devil and all of his lies, all of his deception, all of his tricks and his schemes and his plots. We can, by the blood of Jesus, by the authority of God, we can, we can indeed we can. And so um, that, that, that verse that speaks to us about um, the liar and that he is the father 
of lies. It's his native language. That's only that's the only language he has is the lie. Uh, because he's hopeful the enemy, Satan, wants us to be deceived to the point where we think that God is not concerned, that God is not faithful, that God is not interested, that God is uh, only wanting us to, and to see us suffer. And all of that, hallelujah, is a lie from the pit of hell. All of that. And even that if the lie that Jesus doesn't have power or that it's limited or that he's just a teacher or that he's just a prophet and that he's not the savior and that he's not the Lord and that he's no, those are all the things of the deceptor or the devil, Satan speaking to them about. So when he comes in at this verse, he's uh, verse number 42, that he's talking to them through the whole perspective of him defending the weak. And, and most times, most times we don't want to admit that we are possibly weak, weak in spirit, weak in body, weak in mind. We don't want to, we may, we may have a hard time accepting that we are weak, weak because we're succumbing to the temptations of sin. Weak, weak, weak. But Jesus says, I come to defend the weak. This whole chapter is about defending the weak and by his very testimony, that's what validates his truth. He, he validates that he's the light of the world. He validates that if he testifies that it's a valid testimony and that all our role is, is to accept that he is the total truth. And that there is no deception in him, but and th and that it's not to be compared to human standard. That that would be that would be another lie of the devil. That there's this human standard. Isn't it what the, the devil told um, uh, Adam and Eve in the garden that you could be like God. You could you, but but we are not meant to surpass or be equal to uh, God. And that. The lie would then be that our pride tells us that we ought to be in a higher position or that we deserve to know more than we know. And that would be also a lie. All we can know is what God allows, permits us to know and understand, but keep seeking Christ because the more you see Christ, the more you'll gain an understanding, the more the lies will be uh revealed and the deception will be uncovered the more you seek Christ and that's what Jesus was saying to them in the temple that the more you seek to understand who I am and who I who I have been sent by and why I have been sent then you will understand that it is all because of God's love for us and that God's uh, giving us the opportunity, even through Jesus's death, even through Jesus's uh, resurrection, even through Jesus's ascension, all of that brings us opportunity, not just to know him as a teacher, not just to know him as judge, not just to know, but to know him in his total, hallelujah, what perfection. He is a perfect savior. And the attitude of the wicked is that there's some issue with Jesus. Like there's a flaw, like where you're from, where you're from, that's not good enough because you're from Nazareth, you're from Galilee, but where you're, who, who, you're, who, you're, who your father was in the earthly realm. He's a carpenter, he's not, he's not kingly enough. All of those attitudes are what continues to keep many of us trapped. We're trapped by the thoughts of your heritage. Your daddy wasn't this or your mother wasn't that. So now somehow the devil has told you, you can't be because you've never seen a person in your family complete anything positive. So you, you believe the lie. And he says, it's the attitude of the wicked that's holding people captive in their own, from their own promise, from their own promise. I Ooh, that is not the way I thought this was going to go. So let me say this, that this must be for someone who needed to hear about just these thoughts and to be able to probe into what God would be saying to God's people 
about our attitudes, about our ability to adapt to teaching and to accept what we have heard and then to grow and mature from it. Maybe you embrace the fact that you've been listening to lies of the devil and you realize now, oh, that was not God. That was the devil lying to me, keeping me away from the promise and the plan and the origin of what the believers ought to hold and receive. Hallelujah. Because we're supposed to be in this oneness with God and anything that's trying to keep us away from God and the power of God and the plan of God. I'm changing my attitude. I'm not, I'm, I'm not mad about the situation I may be facing. I'm changing my attitude because it's leading me to where I get defended by Christ. God, Christ is going to defend the position that in which I am standing and God's going to defend because I'm seeking after the pleasure of God. God's going to defend the uh, investment that God has made in every believer. God's going to defend and we don't have to file, be then found tweetering and teetering between rather who I belong to. I belong to God. Come on, somebody. I belong to God and Christ defends me. And I know the truth because I follow Jesus. I know the truth because I'm learning more about who he is, his personhood, his divinity, his plans when he was in the earth, his instruction that he left for those who would remain after he left the earth, the plan that he has for spiritual growth and receptivity. The reason he says, I did this is because I want you to draw nearer. I want you to draw nearer. I want you to be able to come to God. Reason why he ripped the veil. I want you to become able to come close into the holies of holies. The reason that I came that you would have life. I want you to renew your connection with God. Those are all the truth, baby. That, that's where all the truth is. All of that other stuff about not having to go this distance will then be the lie. I got to go the distance because uh, I am following after the defender of the week. I got to go the distance because the claim of what Jesus has done, it gets fulfilled in me. There's no conflict. There's no uh, war between uh, that I believe God or that I believe say, no, no, no. The devil is a liar. I believe God. And the conflict then that we might be facing is to only attempt to make us go back to the liar. And we're not doing that. We're not going back to the liar. We are not in conflict for nothing. We have this conflict you might be facing here in this earthen vessel is so that you will be defended as you continue to trust in the Lord and the power of his might. I'm a child of God. No question about it. That, that whole, those whole verses should help us to know that we know the truth. And the truth is that Jesus has defended us, that Jesus will continue to defend us and that the desire of our God is to continue to follow in spiritual divine direction through the love of Christ. That's that's my time. Oh my goodness. I tell you, I am so glad. I'm so glad that I know the truth. I'm so glad that I have learned of Jesus's ways. I'm so glad that he does no, no longer has to only give me uh, the uh, easy stuff. I don't just need the milk. I need to, I, I need, and I am receiving the difficult teaching so that I can hear and bear under it. I can bear under the correction. I can bear under the chastisement. He says, I chasten those whom I love. And so if we feel like God is chastening us and, 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 and chastising us, it's because God wants to read align us to truth, 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 and not the lie 
of the devil. October 4th and 18th is our next time for Bible study, uh, looking at the word of God, uh, continuing to attempt to be uh, as specific about it as possible. Uh, there's just so much in John 8. I, I encourage you fully to read all of John 8, see all of what Jesus has said and how we ought to um, be a, a, aware of the temptations of going back to um, the deceptor, the deceiver. But we know that Christ has defended us even in our weaknesses and we're eager to know the truth. Tell us the truth, Jesus, and help us to have a heart to embrace it and a heart to live in Jesus's truth. The truth, hallelujah, that he is our savior, our Lord. He's the light of the world. He is the prince of peace. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining in with us. This is Elder Lisa and the Ephesians 320 Ministries. Time for Bible study. We'll see you again October the 4th and 18th. Love you so much. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you great peace. Thank you again for joining us. This has been an amazing time thinking about the truth of our, G of our Lord Jesus and how much we have to embrace, adapt, adjust to the truth. Glory to God. Love you. See you next time.